There is something sacred about the whispering and the longing of the heart and the way spirit moves within us, which is the foundation of empathy, but also intuition. The way that it caresses our essence, our consciousness, and that which extends beyond this lifetime, extends beyond this persona. It is so gentle yet so fierce at the same time, nudging at first, just as though when you are eating a meal and you start to become satiated, before you really have the feeling of being full, if you are connected with your body and not completely dysregulated like many of us are or used to be. You get sensations that are very mild, that are not overpowering. Feedback that says, I'm full, I'm full. And if you are dysregulated and you continue and you continue and you continue as is revered in American culture around holidays such as Thanksgiving, and Christmas sometimes. Like I was out shopping today and I overheard a woman talking about how she puffed up after Christmas because she ate so much. And it reminded me of the culture, the phenomenon of eating to excess as a way to celebrate abundance. It is thematic, thematic of that time of the year. But when we cut ourselves off from our signals in every day, then we reach the point of discomfort. And if we keep going beyond that, then it becomes extremely uncomfortable. And similarly, the guidance system of the soul works in the same way. It starts off with little nudges, curiosity, inclinations, thought forms that begin to become present in our minds. Where did that come from? Well, somebody just thinking of me out of the blue, energetically suddenly aligned because the frequency is rhythmically and harmonically optimized to pull both of you into the same reality layer. And all of a sudden, Boom, you see them. It starts off with little nudges. It starts off with little, hmm, I wonder how they're doing. Or, hmm, I wonder about this decision. I wonder about this job. I wonder about this new direction. And then you start playing with it, right? You start intellectualizing depending on your emotional process for deciding you, if you are in tune with your emotions and your visceral reactions, you might start visualizing and seeing how does it feel. For those of you who are disconnected from your emotions, you might bypass this altogether and just stay in the mind. Is it a good idea? Does it make sense? What happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? Then what happens there? And you go through this whole decision tree of cause and effect, pros and cons. And for those of you who are exceptionally gifted or even profoundly gifted, then this can take quite a bit of time because your decision tree that you're mapping out is quite complex. But if you get lost there, then you disconnect from your spiritual center and you can be so in your head that you actually miss the call of your spirit until it becomes a fierce wind and not every decision will actually become a fierce hurricane like wind 
it really depends on your destiny. So for example, if you are being guided away from a certain person or a certain situation, then it'll start off as little, little nudges, but it'll get louder and louder and louder, particularly if that decision that you are considering is a destiny killer. And it would take you so far off track of your potential and where you are meant to be. And your guidance team is like, wrong place, wrong time. Don't go there. Not this way. Not this way. And then it will be echoed in your environment. You might hear lyrics that stand out to you in a song that you've heard a gazillion times before. And then you'll just... The lyrics will suddenly hit you differently. I remember having this experience when I was um, a teenager and I had uh, taken a left turn. I don't want to get into this part of my history because it'll take me too far off track. I was taking a left turn and all of a sudden I was hearing in this favorite song of mine that I had been listening to for years, right? Pretty much on repeat. I was hearing that I needed to leave and I needed to abandon that life path. And it just hit me and it kept sticking with me. And I would just walk at night listening to the song and I couldn't shake it, right? This was the universe yelling at me through my intuition. But before I got to that, moment when I was talking to people in my life about my circumstance, I was also receiving guidance and receiving feedback like, "Mm, I don't know if this is right for you. Have you considered a different way? And even people I didn't know very well were helping me to sort of see what was happening from a different perspective. And All of these things combined, in addition to my own internal process, is what finally shook me, as well as the influence of important people in my life. Like my grandmother, her words just kept echoing in me. And even though I wasn't talking to her presently, it was like the memory of her words was creating this hurricane of everything that was leading me out of that left turn. And so I left. And I have no idea what my life would have turned into had I not. But I know that the direction that I ended up taking was right for me. I could feel that. And so this is how it happens, right? Is that when you are faced with a potential loss or devastating blow to your destiny or potential that is going to be unrealized, then the universe will conspire to make sure that you get the message. But sometimes in the event that you are trying to optimize your reality and you're already working with a couple of potentials for greatness and you're already pretty much on track, but there are, let's say, different projects or different vibes or different places that offer different things. And it's not like a left turn, but it's just an optimization. Then you might not get an overwhelming siren of support because the universe is going to be like, yep, it's, it's your choice. What do you choose? And this is where tuning in to the quietness of your spirit, especially when figuring out the timing of your manifestations, particularly if you are stepstoning or weaving your manifestations. So you're working with multiple potentials, multiple destinies, multiple businesses, multiple projects, and you need to figure out who and what to prioritize first and it becomes almost this puzzle and the key to unpacking this 
is, in my opinion, not to come at it from the mind, because when we are working in the quantum field, the mind may be linked to a binary rationality that is specific to where you've been and where you're coming from, but not where you're going necessarily. And so the decision trees and the analytical patterns that your brain is entrained to go through, in other words, the loops (laughs) and the hamster wheels that you're used to running in your mind in order to solve problems and to analyze decisions can actually be a detriment when you're working with quantum probabilities if you're coming from binary cognition style. So as a result, sometimes you need to set the rationality aside and actually feel it out. And if you happen to be irrational on the Myers-Briggs, not a big fan personally of the Myers-Briggs, but it has its merits, particularly as people are transcending binary cognition. The personality is also binary. According to that binary scale, it literally is a binary scale. You're either an introvert or an extrovert. Wait a second. What happened about the ambiverts? It turns out that you can be a mix of those two, but technically by the binary measurements, it forces you into binary categories. So this is my biggest complaint with it. Even though people score in the middle, such as myself, I'm one of those in a couple of aspects. That being said, it's a great tool for a first pass and a lot of people over identify with it and further compartmentalize their personality more, but that's its own thing. So I don't want to get too far off on a tangent. Let's say you're hyper rational. You're disconnected from your F you're disconnected from your feeling. You're, you might struggle with this a little bit more. I would argue that that's not the whole picture of you, but it is in a binary society because you learn how to fit yourself into that box. I'm a former INTJ. Now I'm an INF asterisk. It was actually, it doesn't matter. So, sorry. So what happens is that the way you approach the world is dictated by this binary tool that now you have this feedback loop of fitting yourself into, oh, I'm just a, oh, well, I'm just a ESTP or, oh, I'm an ESTP and this is why I am the way that I am and da, 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 and that's optional. It's actually optional. And I know if you are a psychologist and personality psychologist, you're going to disagree with me if the field is still heavily dogmatic and that personality is intractable, but I, I beg to differ. So that is going to be an issue when stretching into things like reality shifting. Is it possible? Absolutely. But you have to rework your natural tendency of approaching problems because your old paradigms are going to keep you locked in to a binary dualistic experience. And when you're trying to actually shift into a multi-dimensionality experience that exceeds what the rational mind thinks you're actually capable of. And so as a result, for those of you who are like this, it is imperative to quiet the mind in meditation if possible you can start with a guided meditation if you're not already an experienced meditator. You can also listen to music. You can get into flow state. You can really actually change your brainwave activity, become the observer, and quiet the analytical part of your mind. Tune into your body, bring your awareness into the subtle sensations of your chakra system where your electromagnetic energy is flowing 
if you're awakened to that and if you're not then feel free to reach out to me i offer this as part of my coaching energy activations and also tunings for those that are ready for that not everybody is so you can actually tune into the sensations of your thought forms i'm not talking about the analytical part of your brain the hamster wheels and the loops but actually your urges your curiosities if you pull your awareness into your let's say sacral chakra your root chakra even your solar plexus and you just allow yourself to feel whatever sensations pulses visceral gut reactions anything that's like eh Ooh, ooh, I don't know. Mm, yes. Oh, oh, oh that's inter hmm. Then you can bypass the analytical mind, which can be a hindrance, and you can feel what your internal guidance system is actually trying to communicate about a particular decision or a person or circumstance. And through that process, you can then combine it with the mind, with the analytical part of your brain, and you can come to a realistic decision-making paradigm that's actually going to be working in your favor, harnessing your strength, right? We don't want to take your strength and throw it away. We actually just want to set it aside for a moment and develop other skills to then level up your innate abilities. Similarly, for those who are hyper-emotional, you can do the same process but working to create distance between your emotional experience and the analytical experience or if you're not body centric most of you are if you are heavily emotional then you're gonna you're, you're gonna have overwhelming feelings in the body because usually people who have emotional sensitivities and intensities feel their emotions very unusually Whereas, let's say, hyper-intellectual people are generally cut off from their emotions and they'll have body reactions that they are oblivious to. <laughs> like literally, they'll be having anger in their body and they won't, they won't even notice that their hands are clenched and that their jaw is sort of like grinding back and forth and their veins are starting to pulse because they're disconnected from receiving that information because they're too much in their head. So those of you who are hyper-emotional are likely overwhelmed by your body's responses. And that has the effect of disconnecting you from your mind. So the process for you is a little bit different. Where, But it's still the same. It's, it's the same overarching idea where you need to combine the analytical part of your mind by separating yourself from your emotional experience. And the way that you can do that is by focusing on your energy in your chakra system versus the feelings. That's a different sensation. And then setting the feelings aside, unpacking those later, and connecting it with, do I actually think that this is right for me, regardless of how I feel about it? Does this make sense with my life path direction? Because when you're over emotional, what happens is that you just start seeing red or you just disconnect from rational decision making. I've seen it. I've seen so many cognitive errors where it's just like the mind goes blank. And so your awareness in your energy, does it feel toxic in your energy centers? Do you have a history of toxicity with that person? Do they have a history of talk? I know it feels good. I know the magnetism is there. I know they're your TF, right? But now we need to like really think about this. How does it makes sense if your energy feels like you've got a vampire on you and they have a history of lying to you 
abusing you, using you, or whatever it is. I don't care how it feels for the moment. How does your energy centers register when you think about that person reaching back out to you? Because the emotions can actually be tampered with through things like shadow wounds, ego, pride, not wanting to be left behind, not wanting to be rejected or abandoned. So it can blind you. And it could actually be the most toxic feeling, energetically speaking. And you're like, I'm going for it. I'm going to marry this person. And you're like, it makes no sense. And energetically, it drains you. But yet it feels right. So when you have a disconnect like that, you can end up making really, really horrific decisions for yourself that you don't have to, especially if you listen to your early guidance system. It's sort of like taking the early train out. You don't have to get on the train and go all the way to the World Trade Center, right? Your intuition will tell you. Holistically, you have so many guidance systems that will tell you if you listen. So listen, I am a reality shifting coach and a shadow patterns breaking coach. If you are interested, feel free to email me at sacredjourneyproductions at gmail.com.